Hi there, this video is going to fault find on a household microwave oven. The microwave has been pretty much dismantled apart from taking the magnetron off the frame. The symptom of the fault is that the microwave oven takes current of about 3.7 amps at 230 volts, which is 850 watts, but the food does not heat up. So that would suggest that for whatever reason the magnetron is not emitting radio waves of 2.45 gigahertz into the oven to vibrate the water molecules and heat the food. Given the fact that it takes 3.7 amps, there is partial operation but there's no heating of food. So that would suggest that the low voltage side of the circuit is working but the high voltage side is not. So the fault is likely to be on the high voltage side. On the high voltage side we've essentially got a capacitor and we've got high voltage diode and we've got a magnetron. So these components work at high voltage. If you're in any doubt, you do not have the electrical skills to dismantle any electrical products, you do your own risk assessment. If you don't have the skills and knowledge, you do not do it. So, we're going to look at the high voltage side. So, we have a schematic here, and the schematic shows that the electrical circuitry of a microwave oven has essentially got a low voltage side, it's got a high voltage side that's split with the transformer. So, what we're going to look at is the operation of the capacitor, the operation of the high voltage diode to see if those components are working or not. So what we're going to do is we have the diode here. Now normal diodes work at an on voltage of about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 of a volt. So we have standard silicon diode here and if we put the meter onto the diode setting it outputs a voltage above the on voltage of the diode. Let's just connect it this way around. Do, does this standard diode conduct? No, it doesn't conduct because it's in reverse. If we swap the leads over, what we can see is we're getting an on voltage of 5.3 volts. Sorry, 0.53 volts, which is pretty standard, 0.6 for a silicon diode. So that is functioning correctly. The high voltage diode on the other hand, take these leads off, high voltage diode, let's see if what we get. So one way around, there's no reading, swap the leads over. Uh, both ways round, there's no reading. So if a diode conducts in one direction, you should get an on voltage. But the issue is it's high voltage diodes, so you cannot just use a meter because it's only going to give out a few volts. These diodes work above 10 volts. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a power supply and we're going to connect the power supply to the diode to see if it's working or not. DC power supply, we switch it on. What I would suggest is you're careful with the current setting, the overload, so don't just leave it on high. You want to make sure it's not going to take too much current. At the moment, it's only got one volt there. If we turn the voltage up to about 10 or so, it should start to conduct. So that would suggest it's in reverse mode. Turn the voltage back down, swap the leads over, and let's see what it's doing. It's not taking any current at the moment. We can see there, voltage is zero. Let's turn the voltage up a bit. Still not taking any current. We get up to about 9 volts. You can see it's starting to take current. It's starting to switch on. We're getting up above 10 volts, we're getting up there, we've got a current set and we'll just put it up a bit. We can see it's taken current now. So the suggestion would be, well the evidence is that the diode, high voltage diode, is in working operation. So given the fact that that works, we then go to the capacitor. So it's a capacitor 0.92 microfarads, plus or minus 2%. So when we put a meter onto capacitance setting, 
multimeter onto capacitance setting up here. Move that lead over to here. Let's see, got too many leads in here, not these ones. This lead here, capacitor. Capacitors, you've got to make sure that it's discharged, that it's been discharged already. There is a discharge resistor across it, but don't rely on the, that working. You always discharge the capacitor first to make sure there's no voltages present so it's not got a shock risk. That's been done already. So let's just test a capacitor to verify the meter is working properly. This capacitor is 470 micros. It does take a little bit of time to charge and it should come up with a reading if we're on the right setting. Let's just see, hold down there. Yep, it should come up with a value. So it's overloaded because it's 470 and that range is 20. Go on to the next range. It does take a little bit of time to charge up and give a reading. And what we expect is 470 microfarads within reason. It's above 200. So we go up again. You want to be on the lowest setting to get accuracy. So 474 microfarads, that would suggest that the meter is working. We expect 0 0.92 microfarads on here. And we'll put it back down to this setting down here. Just get the lead again. We'll stick the leads on here, on here. And let's see what we read. Now there, are, there can be a time delay for capacitor to charge up to get a measurement. And let's just see how this goes. So it's, there's no reading there, it's OL. Uh, and that is on the lowest range, it's 0.92, we're on 20 micro range. So you would expect a reading. So that, that would indicate that the capacitor may not be working property, properly because it isn't giving us a capacitance value out here. So one thing we can do is to do an ohm, now do an ohms test to get some further information. And we'll put it, let's just put it onto 2K. We put the leads together, make sure it's going to read zero ohms. We'll put it down, we'll leave it on that setting. And we go across the capacitor and do an ohm test on it. And what we can see on the meter is it's reading zero. We put it down to the lower range, 1.3. So effectively that capacitor has gone short circuit. So the capacitor is the component that has gone faulty. Now one other thing, the capacitor has gone faulty. There is a high voltage fuse in the circuit as well. Now what we can see, if you look closely, the fuse wire is actually broken. The fuse is a deliberate weak link in the circuit. Because the capacitor has gone short circuit, the fuse is blown. The magnetron does not get any power. That's why it's not heating the food. And the last test we'll do is, let's just go back. It's reading zero there. Let's test the fuse to see if there's any continuity through it. There's no continuity because the fuse is broken. It's broken the circuit quite correctly because this capacitor has gone short circuit and the magnetron is not heating up. So the com this capacitor is the component that's at fault. Microwave has been stripped down. In a, another video, what we'll do is we'll look at the sustainability, the recycling of the microwave oven, the metal, the components, to see what we can recycle and to promote sustainability. So this video is about fault finding on a microwave. Thank you for watching.